Hello, I'm Franz. I lead Concrete CMS. Today we're going to talk a little bit about where we came from and where we're going. So that's going to cover our history, uh, vision, the brand. We're going to get a little bit into our culture and um, how we use that to make decisions. Uh, and where really the future uh, is going to take us and uh, hopefully you along too. So let's get right into it. A um, little bit about me and where Concrete came from. I grew up uh, in a manufacturing software family. So my dad was using computers to improve systems. Right? If you could build a widget, he could build it faster with computers. Uh, for me, computers were a communication tool. So I was big into Usenet and IRC and running BBSs. So on the upper left here, uh, you'll see a, a screenshot of Telegard BBS from 1988, probably. Um, and this is before we had a web. Uh, way back in the day, social media happened in your basement. Um, you would uh, hook your computer up to a modem, dial another computer, and you could leave messages in a forum there. You could trade files. You could play games. And the original uh, apps, we called them doors. Um, and I was heading into this scene, I made friends through BBSs that I still have today. Um, it was formative to my life experience. Uh, it was really, it showed me that computers can be a powerful tool for helping commun humans communicate with one another. Um, and that was really exciting. So when the web came out in the mid 90s, I dropped out of college. Uh, started doing anything web related and uh, down here in the lower left was probably 1998. I was uh, building web 1.0 stuff and those days you could hang out on an email list or two and um, I was building some of those big names you've heard about from the early days. Uh, just churning out code at 35 bucks an hour. Um, eventually felt like I was missing the show so I moved out to uh, Portland, Oregon and met Andy. We started working together uh, as he finished school. I did some time at a big IT shop, started this company, um, and we started making online community uh, solutions for angel investors that wanted to own um, a place for a space, if you will. So uh, Indy 911 was an online music community before MySpace. Um, we built a, a community for um, parents of, uh, of kind of elementary and middle schools. Um, we had a nice little agency where we could kind of be your, work with an angel investor through Series A, um, get something built and get some traction going. And then 2008 hit and all the money dried up and at the same time uh, Facebook went, uh, you know, dropped the word just for college kids and instead started to shift to like we want to be the only BBS on earth. Um, and so there was just really no point in building these online communities anymore. So we gave uh, our tool set that we had been using, we had, over years of doing that work, we had made our own CMS, we called it Concrete CMS, and we stuck it on SourceForge because there was no GitHub. Uh, and we called it Concrete 5, we said, well, I hope someone likes this. And it turns out they did. Within 90 days, we were Project of the Month on SourceForge, and some big brands came to us and said, can you help us build great solutions? And we said, absolutely love to, and made a marketplace of add-ons and themes, uh, built our own forums. We, we went down a decade-long journey of um, kind of jumping from project work to trying to build a community and, and back and forth. And um, here we are today in uh, 2021, asking ourselves to some degree, well, why are we really here? Uh, Concrete is really cool. Uh, it is a great platform for building websites. Um, but it's not the easiest way to make money uh, online. Certainly having a, a free CMS is not the most lucrative path we could have chosen. Um, but what really gets us out of bed? What is the vision for this company uh, beyond just making money through writing software? And after some deep introspection, we have come to agree that our goal is to build a web for the greatest good. So we know we're building software for communication online. That's the building web stuff. Um, but we know it's for the greatest good as well. We fundamentally think that computers can help bring people together, um, and that is a positive thing. That is a uh, less appetizing position to take uh, these days than it was in the 90s. Uh, it used to be pretty easy to be a, a utopian cyberpunk uh, after the last uh, 
few years, there's definitely more challenges to that vision. But um, we still believe that it's not the technology's fault that people are being rude to no one another online. Uh, it's the way some of that technology has been funded, and uh, that can be solved. So we believe in a democratized web. We think that there should be more people owning more places that people get together online. Um, we think that the internet will be a force for good if it's not owned by a handful of people and uh, in, in countries. We think that um, we still believe it's possible for a, a, a democratized internet to uh, be a communication platform that makes the world a better place. And that's exciting. That is something uh, beyond a paycheck that we can all get out of bed for in the morning. So that leads us to a very weird question that an angel investor once asked me. Uh, why would anybody even want a website? People don't buy things just because they need the function. right? If you only bought sodas because you were thirsty and you only bought cars because you needed to get from point A to point B, there would be three flavors of soda and three types of cars, and that would be it. Uh, they would generally tend to go down in price because market forces would push them down in price. Uh, but that's not the case. There's many, many types of cars, and some of them are very expensive, while not particularly better than any other ones. And the same is true for beverages and many, 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 if not most, other products. So this idea that people are buying something for, for more than just a functional reason, they're buying it for some emotional reason, is pretty fundamental to the idea of branding. And when you ask yourself, why does somebody need a website at all? Take a step back. What, is, what are they getting out of a website? The answer is they have some ideas they want to share with somebody else, right? They're trying to make a connection. Maybe they're trying to sell a product or a service. Uh, maybe they're trying to share an idea. Uh, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's religion. Maybe it's a, a, a sport. Maybe it's just some cool pictures of their cat. Doesn't matter. Very few websites are built for an audience of just one. Um, Certainly in the, in, the, in the world of content management, we're thinking about what we do and being a, a uh, building platform for content-heavy websites. Those exist to make a connection with somebody else. Um, that's the emotional reason that you are looking for a website. In order to have a website, you need a content management system. So what do you need out of a content management system? Well, you need something that is easy to use. It right? doesn't matter if somebody else can build anything that, that they can imagine out of it. If I can't do it, it's not useful. It's got to have a robust feature set. All right? It doesn't matter if it's super easy to use. If it doesn't do anything I need, well, that's not useful either. Um, and something I think is really important that we maybe haven't always done a great job with is it has to come with a bunch of people. Right? If I'm showing up because at some level I... Um, I want to make a connection with somebody else. I'm selling my, my product idea, cat pictures, whatever. It doesn't do me a lot of good to have an experience in building the website that is lonely, right? Like if I'm, if the, if the reason I choose a website and a platform for it is to, for this, um, this interpersonal uh, emotional connection, the experience of building it should have some of that involved too. Um, if you feel like you're just in a dark hole on your own, well, that's not really satisfying the thing that you showed up originally hungry for. So you probably won't make it. Conversely, um, if you've got a robust community and a bunch of people who are really passionate about helping one another, that can make up for a platform that's perhaps not that easy to use and doesn't have that many features in the box. If there's just a lot of really helpful people that makes you feel like you're part of something bigger than you, um, that third leg is really important. So that idea of our, our, our customers want something that's easy, uh, full of features, and, but comes with people and, and social connection is, is pretty, I think, foundational to the experience that you're looking for out of a CMS, which leads us to um, a, a clear promise I know that we can make to you. Um, anything is easy if we build it together. We build an awful lot of stuff with concrete, you can build an awful lot more if you find the right expert to help you. Now, this doesn't mean the more people you throw at a problem, the easier it gets, but it does mean that there's a lot of, of different perspectives and a lot of different talents, and connecting those people in the right way is going to be central to everyone's success. So now I want to talk a little bit about culture. Um, culture is an overused word, especially in our industry. You know, I used to think it was about foosball tables. 
Uh, a lot of people think it's about uh, you know free free lunches and dinners and an exercise room on site and I have come to believe that that stuff is a benefit, maybe at best, and often just a way to get young people to work really hard. Um, culture to me is what makes you different from something else that is basically the same. Um, I think maybe the easiest way to describe this is to think about countries. Because uh, if you know, we all think of countries as having a pretty clear culture, right? If I'm saying, look at Spain, France, and Germany. Um, geographically, they're all right next to each other. Uh, demographically, you know, a bunch of people. There's men, women, kids. They want stuff. Uh, very different places, though, right? There's, you know, Spain, France, and Germany all have very unique and distinct culture. That word culture means, well, what, what is different about these places? If there's nothing, you know, kind of physical or, or, or you know, specific you can point at, culture is the differences between between that. So for us, culture is well, what makes us different than any other software company with a CMS. Uh, and the way you, st you define culture typically is in values. And you say, well, our values are we do this and that. Um, and so that's what makes us unique. Um, values are challenging because they tend to be aspirational and things that no one would say no to, right? So you can have values like, uh, you know, we want to we want to provide a great return to investors, and we want to have outstanding customer support, and we want to build revolutionary products that define the market. Um, each one of those things is something that, of course, anyone would say, "Yeah, sure, sounds great. I'll I'll have a slice of that." But you can't have a slice of all three pieces of pie. Like there there will be times where you can't make all the money, help all the people, and build the best product. You're going to have to choose one of those from time to time. So. I have found it helpful to think instead of values, um, which are, are easy to say yes to and cheap, how about virtues? Virtues are difficult to say yes to and expensive. Um, virtues are experiential, whereas values are aspirational. Uh, virtue is something that you have, you have shown. You are willing to pay the price. You walk the walk. If you think of this, if you say someone, that person's virtuous, well, that, you know, that to me comes with the connotation they said no they said no to something that was difficult to say no to you know because of their you know their values were demonstrated through their virtue so we've looked at um our work over the years the decisions that we've made the reasons that we've made those decisions the ones we're proud of the ones we're not and put together a list of virtues that we think we've demonstrated over the years and that we want to make sure we continue to demonstrate as we grow um, and, and that'll help us achieve our vision. Uh, so those virtues are being equitable, uh, making sure that you're thinking about everybody, not just a few. Uh, being truthful, radical transparency is uh, kind of the first step towards all good things that happen uh, in my mind. Uh, being curious is central to making it in technology. If you're not curious, you will be left behind. Um, being useful is uh, something that I deeply believe in, Just taking a, a, a little extra t moment to make something better than you found it is rewarding for you and it puts a smile on everybody else's face. So it is a, uh, a net positive at no cost, um, which leads well to being kind, which you might think is the same, but I think touches a little bit more on empathy, right? Finding the energy to understand where somebody else is coming from. Um, that is not always easy, but it's always rewarding. And being persistent. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's so many aspirational statements about this. It doesn't matter how many times you fall. It matters how many times you get up. But the reason that there's so many uh, cheeky statements about being persistent is because it really is what it takes. Uh, just trying over and over again is central to what we do and how we uh, achieve success. So what are we doing right now uh, to achieve those goals? Well, as you no doubt know, we are relaunching our public-facing website, all the parts to it, and there is a big emphasis on a new hosting platform as part of that. Uh, that will help us pivot away from um, so much of the big services work that has helped fund Concrete to date and put us in a position where we can really spend more time um, helping the community blossom, really building out better documentation and responding to forum posts and just being present in the community uh, in a way that is difficult when we are busy 
um, hunting and delivering on these um, big projects for um, these large clients. So I was just trying to find some balance there. Um, another huge thing that we've been working on is really systemizing everything that we do. Um, so I've gotten really into reading different business books in the last few years, and one of the better ones is um, one called E-Myth by Michael Gerber. Um, it's an unfortunate name, but the idea is there's an entrepreneurial myth that uh, people who build businesses are great at running businesses. And often the reality is people who build businesses are passionate about their, their trade, their craft. Uh, for us, it's about making digital communication platforms. Um, all of the business part is kind of a necessary evil. Uh, you need to get over that and start to see building that business part as the same way you see building a product that, ooh, I can get all fiddly with it and um, that's a craft as well. And the way you do that is by systemizing everything. So if I'm uh, solving a problem or Andy's solving a problem or Corbin's figuring something out, um, you know, when Evan has to get in there and, and, and make something happy, we got to figure out, well, what did I do? How did that start? What are the steps I took to solve that? How can I document that and hand that off to somebody else? Uh, so somebody else could do this next time and I can move on and up to something, uh, a different problem. Uh, that's what we're working on um, across the board at the same time as we, we relaunch the community um, so we can spend more time uh, helping the community uh, use concrete for building cool solutions. That gets us to um, where I would like to see us five years from now. Uh, as those systems are formalized, we're going to get to a place where no one personality is key. Um, I don't mean that we'll be run by committee. I, I firmly believe that um, there will be very important roles that you'll need bright, visionary, brilliant people in. But I don't know if that's always going to be me or Andy or Corvin. Or, I think with, with every reason to believe that we can all move around and that there are people who are much smarter than us that can take on some of those roles. Um, defining how those roles interact with each other, uh, that's the key now. Um, once that all exists, we can have a, a system that um, can really scale beyond what any one of us as an individual or even a small team can do. That'll get us to a spot where we can start to revisit the ownership. Um, because we have funded so much of concrete on big client work, we're still in a position where I own all of it and you know, we don't have to chase quarterly profits, we don't have to keep investors happy, we don't have an IPO that is coming down because the, you know, the fund has an exit, like none of that matters to me. Um, but I do want to get to a spot where we can share some of the ownership in this cool thing that we've made. So the way I see that working is um, sharing a, a large chunk of the ownership with the employees that work here, Portland Labs, uh, and also doing a direct public offering so we can share a large chunk of the, uh, of the company with the community who has been uh, just as central to our success as, as anything else. Um, and I really want Concrete CMS to achieve the status of an institution, to be infrastructure, to be something that lasts beyond uh, five, ten years. I want it to exist for decades and be a tool set that people are using to build websites uh, many, many years from now, and, and new things, whatever they may be, um, I, I feel like this is a, you know, we're at, a, at a critical time where we're defining what the pens and pencils and printing presses and, and, and cost of paper looks like for generations to come. And you know, we have an opportunity to say that paper and pen should be free. Um, it, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't, and free in both ways, as in beer and in speech. You shouldn't have to give up your personal data in order to get at one. You shouldn't have to have somebody else's ads all over one. You shouldn't have to have spent a bunch of money to get it. This stuff is not that expensive to make, and the world's a better place if there are many ways to express ideas and share them. So... I want to see this organization and this, this product grow uh, beyond what any one individual on our team can, uh, can make it do or even beyond what this team can do as a group. Um, and so that is our goal. So to recap what I've told you today, uh, our vision is building a web for the greatest good. Uh, people 
are here because they are trying to communicate ideas with, with one another. Uh, and so it's really important as a CMS that we have an easy to use platform with a lot of features, but that we also incorporate people and that idea of connection throughout the entire process from uh, sales to build out to managing it. You've got to be able to make a personal connection throughout that, uh, or this is going to be a difficult platform for people to choose in the big picture. Uh, I believe that anything is easy, if easier at least, if we do it together. Um, I believe that if we are equitable, truthful, curious, useful, kind, and persistent, that we will stay true to our vision of building the web for the greatest good. So I want Concrete CMS uh, to be an institution that you can own part of. Um, I know we can do it. I know we've got a great platform that is underappreciated today. It does so much that people barely understand, including me. Um, I know if we stay true to this vision and um, rely on our virtues and if we have your help and build this out together, we can make something that we can really be proud of and we can make sure that the web is really built for the greatest good.